to everyone on the flight deck. Aircrew now manning for vent one, case one launch, case one recovery. Temperature 76 degrees, altimeter 29 or 66. Density altitude 1787. Personnel not involved with flight house must now leave the flight deck catwalk. Time to don the complete and proper flight deck uniform. Helmets and blow coats on, gloves on, sleeves rolled down. Check your pockets for loose gear and fod. Check chocks, tie down chains, and loose gear about the decks. Ensure hot exhaust is not blowing on the aircraft. Weapons or personnel. Stand well clear of all rotors, prop arcs, dead intakes, and exhaust. Start to go aircraft. Start them up! Spectrum of tests that we've done out here is, is pretty wide ranging. You know, the, the sexy stuff that we get, the aircraft flying around, we did a lot of catapults, uh, did a lot of recovery, approach work, mission flying, looking at uh, J-PALs, ICLS work at the back of the boat, did some stuff at night. Uh, but that, that encompasses only a little bit of what we've done out here. There's a lot of additional work that uh, logistics test and evaluation has done that you can really only do out here at the ship, with the ship's shape, with the ship motion, with the ship's company. Uh, so we've done a lot. Uh, on the hangar deck with the engine, done a lot with the aircraft, done a lot with the flying program, and it, it's really been multifaceted. The big thing was the minimum in airspeed test. We did that at both mill and max power at 60,000 pounds and 55,000 pounds gross weight. So we went out and we found the no kidding minimum airspeed that you can launch uh, the jet off at those weights in mill and max power. We were testing down to our min plus zero end airspeed point. We try to get to that lowest min point because we add 15 knots for the safety of our pilots and for the aircraft uh, to uh, safely fly away in any condition. And the reason we try to get the lowest point possible is because that's the lowest energy necessary to safely launch the aircraft. So it's definitely a little bit different than your normal catapult launch. Uh, the biggest thing you feel is you feel the jet kind of squat underneath you, the nose pitch up. Uh, you're obviously really looking at altitude to see how low it's actually going to sink, uh, but then the jet flies away and it's a non-event. We did a lot of cleanup, stuff that we didn't, weren't able to finish. So we opened up the crosswind envelope, so now you have a bigger range of winds of which you can launch the airplane. There's not a lot of times that the aircraft carrier will get into 15 knot crosswinds. They, they really manage their winds well. The captain of the ship is very conscious and, and talks to the sailors regularly about this is what our job is, to, is to manage the winds, to manage the sea space, to recover aircraft. Uh, but there are times when you're in a, uh, an operational environment where you may be constrained by the sea space that you have, uh, other traffic, and in that case, you may have to accept greater crosswinds. This time we got out to 15 knots both on the bow and on the waist catapults. Uh, and had good, uh, good results for the aircraft launching and flying away in all the crosswinds that we looked at. I did have the opportunity to do the uh, Gen 2 night test last time around, and uh, this time I flew the Gen 3 helmet. So the primary differences are the alignment quality of the helmet was a lot better, so that means the pitch ladder and its representation of the real world matched better. Um, it also had better image quality, better night vision camera, and uh, overall better display of the symbology. So a lot of our problems that we saw in the uh, Gen 2 helmet, we didn't really see as much in the uh, Gen 3. So it was, a, it was a great opportunity to see how the technologies improve from the one generation to the next one, and what, what we can give the fleet uh, once we finally figure out the final solution.
JPOWS is a Joint Precision Aircraft Landing System, and it's basically just a tool, an instrument tool that we're going to use to do precision landings at the ship. It's actually got a really nice feature that none of our other uh, landing aids have. It, it's data linked the final bearing of the ship, and that displays on our tactical situation display at all times when you have it up. So it's kind of nice. It gives you a situation where it's not only where the ship is at, but where it's pointed and uh, where you need to go to line up with center line for landing. The next version of the software will have a, a, the full precision landing capability. That's what we'll test at DT3. However, the Catbird does have that software in it already. So we actually have the Catbird out here flying approaches to the ship. So you have a 737 aircraft flying approaches coming down um, on final to the carrier uh, and then waving it off, obviously, prior to touchdown. But they were, they were testing that precision landing capability in the Catbird. We didn't leave anything on the table. We, we accomplished everything we set out to do. We, we perform. Uh, it's a lot like what we've come to expect as our, our standard. The teams work well, efficiently, uh, almost autonomously. It's not what the aircraft do that makes you proud anymore. It's how the team works. It's how the team adapts and overcomes. It's neat to watch the aircraft do what they do, you know. It's watching the end speed and the aircraft sink off the bow was always going to be a memorable thing. But what is more memorable than that is watching the team make it happen, watching the team work together, uh, support each other, to put that pilot in a dangerous situation, but to do it smartly and with the proper mitigation. So if something goes wrong, we know we're not going to hurt somebody. And, and that to me is the special nature of all of this work is the teaming, the people, uh, and watching them overcome and adapt.